This week on The Clyde, the Armed Forces Bowl gives SMU the postseason treatment. Most college football players, you know, this is the this is the reason that you go to play college football, to compete against a great team like Army, but also to have this week together as a team. The Mustangs make a difference in the community. To see these kids, it's so important to them to know that people in the community are thinking of them. And SMU squares off with the Black Knights of Army. Looking left, into the end zone, touchdown, Aldrin Robinson. SMU finished the regular season with a 7-5 record. The Mustangs were 6-2 in Conference USA and finished first in the Western Division. Yes, SMU is going to win it! Five ponies were named first team all-conference. Junior left tackle Kelvin Beecham, sophomore running back Zach Line, senior wideout Aldrick Robinson, sophomore linebacker Ja'Garrett Davis, and junior defensive end Taylor Thompson. SMU fell to UCF in the Conference USA Championship game, but still earned a second consecutive bowl berth. The Mustangs were invited to play the Black Knights of the United States Military Academy in the Bell Helicopter Armed Forces Bowl. A bowl bid is a recognition of a successful season. But there's much more to the experience than just football. Sunday night of Bowl Week, the teams gather for a welcome dinner at Fort Worth's world famous Billy Bob's. All right, now we're at Billy Bob's out in Fort Worth. Um, they got great hospitality, they take care of real well. They got great barbecue, uh, desserts, um, you just love them. Hey! So you gotta get down right there, you gotta see it, it gotta be. Barbecue sauce is all over. I'm sure sure y'all get down. Finger looking good right yeah. here. That's a championship meal right there. Championship. You got everything you need. You got the meat. A winning meal. The mac and cheese, salad. You know, you got to be on your health. You got to be healthy. Everything. Everything. It's been a good first day. Uh, we had a good practice earlier getting ready for the game. and um, Just trying to have a good time tonight and uh, just kind of enjoy our time here. The night includes gifts for the coaches and ADs. Fun and games. and a little friendly competition between the teams. SMU takes it 20 seconds! Then it's time for the players to gather their presents. And the players get to pick between their six points on this order form, and they get to pick any one of the gifts as long as it adds up to six points. We've had this, this, uh, this sheet, but when you actually look at it, it, face it really, to face, it, really it changes. changes. Yeah. This is a nice, this is a nice chair right here. This is exclusive. You can't just go up in Walmart and get this. The cup holder versus the recline in the space. Chilling, relaxing. Just trying to figure out which thing I want. I mean, they're both awesome. This is gonna be a tough choice. I have to say, it's gonna be a tough choice. Twenty-four hours later, the ponies are back in Fort Worth for a visit to the four-day weekend comedy club. Nice to see you, Carrie. Tell everyone where you're from, girl. Texas. Thanks for narrowing it down to the biggest state in the union. How many touchdowns do you have this year? Three. Three. How many did you have last year? Zero. Zero. All right. <laughs> you have improved by three hundred percent. I was just sitting there talking and. The spotlight shined on me, and at first I thought that maybe it was around in my area, and and I looked up and I saw my face on the screen in front of us, and I was like, oh man, are they gonna? Are they gonna? You good? How you good? Where'd you play your ball? Uh, Drake University. Drake, Why not? the home of the fighting bulldog. Bulldog. <laughs> but. You know, it still all stems from June, playing music before practice, uh, having guys going out there and dancing. Uh, the fact that we can make fun of each other as a group, uh, I think that's special. You know, the, the players, we all get along, and the coaches, it's great. After the antics of the improv crew, the Mustangs enjoy a hearty meal at the Riata restaurant. It's 
beautiful restaurant. I just finished my plate. It was delicious. I got an 8-ounce sirloin, nice medium rare, some mashed potatoes. I think my dessert is at the table right now waiting on me, so... And the parade of gifts continues as well. Tonight's treat, a fitted Armed Forces Bowl watch. Still ahead, the Mustangs hear from one of the legends of the game. Success begins with a fellow's will. It's all in the state of mind. In 2009, SMU broke a 25-year bowl drought as the Ponies crushed Nevada in the Sheridan Hawaii Bowl. This year, the game is the Bell Helicopter Armed Forces Bowl, and the opponent is the United States Military Academy. On Tuesday of Bowl Week, SMU practices at Burleson Centennial High School. On offense, the Mustangs are looking to put the run and shoot in high gear defense, the Ponies must find an answer for Army's option attack. Triple option, you got to be disciplined, you got to be real physical. Uh, defensively, their front four is very, very good pass rushers. They're undersized, but they do a lot of things and, and really get after you. We know that they're going to play hard regardless of the score, regardless of the time of the game, and that's what you get when you play uh, uh, one, of the, one of the academies. Later in the day, members of both teams visit Cook Children's Hospital to spread some cheer among the patients. Today we have the college football players from both Army and SMU here at Cook Children's Medical Center visiting with the patients that are here today. Uh, we're just here to, you know, kind of try to put some smiles on the kids' faces, hand out some presents and, uh, you know, some gifts that we brought and just uh, try to have a good time here and, and put some smiles on the faces. You should name your bear more mainly. I think that, that'll help <laughs> spice it up. Yeah? That feel better? Yeah? <laughs> It, it just feels amazing that we get to be a part of coming with the team during this bowl experience. It's something about the two teams, but yet we're not here because of our schools. We're here to give back to these children because that's who they're about when we're here right now. And it's just so great to see them smile with the teddy bears we're giving them or the little things. And it just feels so great to be able to give back to them. <laughs> and it's great to see the football players, you know, out of their like macho shells and actually, you know, talking to the kids and getting excited because, you know, it's expected from cheerleaders and dancers to be all peppy and happy to talk to kids, but it's a nice change to the football players do the same. You want to throw it? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that is an arm. To a small child, a college football player is enormous, so to see the look on their face when a, you know, a football player walks up to them and they look up and see this big guy who's come to see them today really makes them feel important. One of the kids said Michael Morris was his favorite football player ever. And you know, that's, that's just awesome. You know, he, you know, he probably watches football you know, every day, watches the NFL, but the fact that Mike came here and he, I asked him who his favorite player was, he goes to the guy with 3-8 on his back. You know, that just you know, sums up everything right there, just how much they appreciate us coming and what they think of us and them. Wednesday, the eve of the big game, the teams gather one last time for the kickoff luncheon at the luxurious Omni Hotel. It's actually an opportunity for the bowl people to, to uh, you know, talk about both the teams, talk about the matchups, you know, recognize the people that have been so instrumental in making this happen. It's a reward for the sponsors of the game, and, and it's just a great way for the, both of the two teams to see one another last for the last time on a friendly basis before they go tomorrow and, and battle each other. Most bowl games are just about two football teams. Ours is more than a bowl game. Ours is a game, is, our game is a full tribute to everyone that has worn the cloth of our nation. The words thank you are not enough. So all of you that have served or are currently serving, please stand and receive the accolades you so truly deserve. The featured speaker is number 88, Dallas Cowboys wide receiver, Drew Pearson. You know, going to bowl games is now part of the culture, again, at SMU. And it was you, Coach, Dr. Turner, Steve Arsini, you brought that back to the hilltop. And remember, life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man. But sooner or later, the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. 
Good luck, Army. Good luck, SMU. God bless our troops and all you wounded warriors out there. God bless you and thank you so much for what you do for our country. And God bless America and thank you for having me. God bless you. Thank you. In the evening, the ponies go through a final walkthrough. For the seniors, this is a particularly poignant moment. It's, it's, it's emotional, man. I didn't think I'd be emotional, but walking off the field right now, man, I'm just like, it's, it's the last time. It's, it's, it's been good. It's had its highs and its lows, but it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Definitely a little emotional and sentimental, realizing that my career here at SMU is finally coming to a close. We were able to resurrect this program back to a, a winning program. Uh, so that'll be the most uh, memorable thing and the biggest part of my legacy, I guess, that I'd want to leave here. We gotta win that game tomorrow. You guys agree? Yeah. yeah, okay, break it down. We'll talk about it. At the end of the day, I left, I, I left every effort. I tried my hardest every day, and that's uh, something I'm proud of. So that'd be, that'd be the main thing. I mean, I'm getting emotional right now. Coming up. The Mustangs square off with the Black Knights. Side caught! Touchdown SMU! The Armed Forces Bowl is normally played in Fort Worth, but with Eamon Carter Stadium under renovation, the game has been moved to Gerald J. Ford Stadium at SMU. Inside the stadium, SMU takes the field for pregame warm-ups. SMU wears black jerseys as a tribute to their opponents. Guys, we know uh, what it's going to be like out there. Back in uh, August, we talked about, about this, persevering. We talked about it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Uh, we have been through so many things, adversity, the injuries, the pain, all that Stuff. We've learned how to, to uh, sacrifice, how to love each other. We, we've done everything you need to do to get to where you want to go. Now it's about where we're, where we're at right now. This is the destination. We wanted to get to a bowl game. That's what it's about. And I'm telling you right now, those guys are going to play hard for 60 minutes. It don't matter what the score is, they're going to play hard. You play harder. You play longer than the opponent. That's what we do. Play for each other. Do it for each other. Play as a team. Just keep it going, keep it going. All right, that's what it's about. Grab a hand. <coughs> Heavenly Father, I thank you for the seniors that are playing their last game they may ever play. Thank you for all the things you've provided for us, all the things you've given us this year. Thank you for the lessons we've learned. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The Mustangs start the game, first and 10 from their own 20. Navy with three down linemen, four on the line of scrimmage, and no pressure, and they look to go deep immediately for Aldrick Robinson down the left sideline. Terrific adjustment on the ball. He comes back to it at the 34-yard line of Army, and he makes the reception for an SMU first down. But just two plays later, disaster strikes. With the 29-yard line of Army, Padron to throw again. Pressure in his face. Ball knocked out. Ball is loose. It's going to be picked up by Army. This is going to be Josh McGarry at the 50, to the 40, to the 30, to the 20. Picks up a block, and Josh McGarry returns it for a touchdown. On the next drive, the Mustangs face a fourth and six from their own 33. Josh Jackson back to return at the Army 30. Yard line, it's a fake punt, and lots of room to run. Zemanski going left, 35, 40, 45, 50. Still going down the left sideline to the 40-yard line. A flag down at the Army 49-yard line, but that is a big gain on a fake punt going left for uh, uh, Matt Zemanski. Unfortunately, the Mustangs fail to capitalize, and Army marches down the field. First down to 10 at the SMU 13. Slot right comes in motion left, and the pitch goes to Malcolm Brown at the 10. Breaks a tackle to the 5. Touchdown, Malcolm Brown from 13 yards out. Carlton's extra point is blocked at the line of scrimmage. The ball goes into the end zone. 
It is Marcus Hunt's third block of the year, the tenth of his career. The Mustang offense moves the ball well throughout the first half. Gun, trip left, Hume. Gun, trip left, Hume. 90, 32, drop. But SMU can't turn the yards into points. Army leads 16 to nothing. The Armed Forces Bowl serves as a reunion for the Mustang football family. Hall of Fame running back Eric Dickerson, SMU class of 1983, watches the game from the sidelines. I looked around, I said, it's a good feeling to look around and see it packed. I haven't seen it packed, you know, since I played. They have not stopped us on offense one time. Do that again, we'll win this game. Three plays away, three plays away. Let's get a break on the <laughs> On their first possession of the second half, the Mustangs put together a 92-yard drive. Kyle out of the shotgun will hand it off. Zach Lyon coming left. Nice block in front of him to the 15. Breaks a tackle to the 20 and up to the 25-yard line. Padron under some pressure. Steps up to avoid it. Throws right. Caught Cole Beasley at the 29 on a comeback. He spins up field to the 30. Up the side. He has to the 35. They pick it up. Padron delivers. Caught Keenan Holman at the 15. Breaks a tackle to the 10. And Holman will finally be stood up at the Army 8-yard line. Big time catch from the freshman wide receiver out of Beaumont Central. Padron will be facing a blitz. Looking left. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Aldrich Robinson. That is his 14th of the year. No disrespect, but you don't get shut out by Army on a ball game at your home field. Why not to that guy? Why not? Speed option. Speed option. There it is. There it is. There it is. Yeah, good call. Good. There you go. Surround good. 35. 35. Early in the fourth, SMU again drives into Army territory. They're going to bring a five man rush. Zach Lines hit the backfield. Breaks the tackle to the 40. Breaks another one at the 45. He runs over Steven Anderson all the way to midfield. Power running up the middle for eight yards. And a burst down for Zach Lines. Second and three from the 28. Steps back to his left. He's going to throw deep down the left side. Caught! Darius Johnson! Touchdown, SMU! Big time throw. Big time throw. But SMU would not score again. The final tally, Army 16, SMU 14. SMU will look back at their 16-14 loss to Army in the 2010 Armed Forces Bowl as a game that slipped away. SMU's offense outgained Army's by almost 200 yards and averaged 6.9 yards per play. The Mustangs defense held Army's rushing attack in check and shut out the Black Knights in the second half. Individually, several ponies enjoyed big days Zach Line rushed for 103 yards on just 17 carries. Darius Johnson caught nine balls for 152 yards. Aldrich Robinson caught a team record 14th touchdown pass and passed the 3,000 yard mark in career receiving. Sophomore quarterback Kyle Padrone threw a pair of TD passes, giving him 31 for the year. Taylor Reed recorded 12 tackles, and Chris Banjo posted nine of his own. Use this disappointment to fuel what you do in the offseason. We're going to be a great football team. I have no doubt in my mind because you're going to lead us to be that. Uh, started slow. We uh, turned the ball over too much in the first half, and that was the difference in the game. And anytime you play a great team like that, uh, they're going to chew the clock on you, and uh, you got to take make the most out of every possession you get. We had to have a gut check way earlier than we did, and um, you know, like this, this can, can't go on any player. This is a team thing. You know, uh, in the offseason, we got to come back and be ready for this kind of team and the kind of effort they're, they're going to put forth. It's just an emotional day. Uh, to play your last game, like the last second ticking off the clock, I just looked around the whole state. I'm like, I'll never play here again. Uh, I'm just thankful to be able to play here and uh, thankful that my time here is done. You know, I was really proud of the kids. I thought they played really hard, played really well today, and, uh, you know, just didn't go our way. I think this season, I, um, the way it turned please, out, please we can learn season. from this game. Um, remember this feeling because it, it really don't feel good.
This team has much to be proud of and even more to look forward to. We have the foundation built. I think we have a lot of good players coming back and we've got a lot of uh, young players committed uh, to, to coming and uh, we're making the steps in a positive direction to, to just keep getting better. But I think we're, you know, we're, we're learning how to compete together and play together and all those things that you do, uh, good football teams do. And, you know, we got to put them together and just keep winning. With a 7-7 seven and seven record, there's no question that this was a year of progress for the SMU football team. You know, we sure wanted to win that one for you guys. There ain't no question about that. Everybody here wanted to do it. We just came up a little short. That's how football is. But I'm proud of you guys. Appreciate all your efforts. Appreciate all your hanging together. I mean, a lot of guys would have just quit. I mean, I'll tell you, four years ago, three years ago, with that score at halftime, it's going to go to 50 to 10, OK? But that's that's uh, why, why we're going to be good, because we, we learn to persevere through all that stuff. All right, grab a hand. A CUSA West Division title, a second straight bowl appearance, and marks all over the record books are signs of a program on the rise. With 18 returning starters, a strong class of incoming student athletes, and June Jones at the helm, the Mustangs are poised to climb even higher next year and in the years to come.